Hi everyone, welcome to Sintita's YouTube channel. So far in Microsoft Fabric, we have explored mostly lake houses, warehouses, Power BI, and other storage related tools. In the next videos, I wanted to touch on the data engineering tools a little bit. So we are going to start with notebooks first. So a Spark notebook is an interactive web-based platform made to engage with data using Apache Spark. And Apache Spark is a fast, flexible, and user-friendly open source platform to work with large-scale SQL batch processing tasks, streaming analytics, and machine learning. The key advantage of Apache Spark is its speed, scalability, and performance. Spark can be used for various things, but when it comes to data engineering, its key application is to work with large data sets pull and transform data from diverse sources, clean data and process streaming data. When using Spark notebooks in Microsoft Fabric, you can choose different programming languages to work with, including Python, Scala, R, and Spark SQL. So that being said, let's go to my screen and see how we can use Spark notebooks in Fabric. So we're going to create a new object, right? And then we're gonna go to the data engineering section and then uh, find a notebook and we are going to deploy a notebook. This may take some time to initialize a notebook. So once you have your notebook, this is the UI, right? By default, you will have the PySpark, Python, but you can also choose other languages. So the very first thing to do is to add a lake house to your existing notebook. You're going to click add lake house. And here you have two options, right? You can create a new lake house and attach your notebook to it, or you can uh, choose an existing lake house and work with that, right? So in this example, I'm just going to choose existing lake house because I have uh, quite a few lake houses created already. I'm going to click next and choose one of my lake houses. Here I have, for example, Adventure Works. And I'm going to add this uh, lake house to this notebook. And this is called notebook one. So I'm just going, I am going to call this sample um, notebook uh, one, right? Let's keep this simple. So in my lake house explorer section, right? Let me drag this a little bit to my right so I can see, so I can have more space. So essentially I have two sections here. I have the Explorer section where I can see what kind of tables and files I have in my lake house, right? And I have a section here for my code. And in the main screen, you have a block of code. You can have several blocks, but you can also write several lines of code in one cell. If you would like to add a new cell to write code, you can hover over to the bottom uh, side of your cell and then just click code. I'm just going to delete this for now. In my lake house, I have four tables, right? Which we created in one of our previous videos. And I also have uh, several files. So let's choose one of the tables in my lake house and see what I can do using PySpark. Let's keep this simple and choose one of the dimension tables, right? So let's say that would be salesperson table. If I right click on the table, I have the option to load data. I will do this and this will automatically write me a code. So if I, if I run my code right in here, run code, this is going to display me the top 1000 rows from the table. When you start your Spark notebook in the beginning, it may take a few seconds to start up because Apache Spark session is being initialized. All right, so here we have our table and I can review what I have in this table. So this is my salesperson table, right? Now let's do some data transformations using PySpark. You can see that I have different salespeople and they have different titles, right? Let me scroll this to the right a little bit so you can see the whole data set. Let's say I would like to know how many of these people have particular job titles. I would like to know how many of them are sales representatives, how many director of sales I have, and sales managers I have. So the logic here will be very simple to count each job title. Let's do this. Let me scroll down here, and then let me add a new cell block. 
Right in here, I can start writing code. To save everyone's time, let me just copy the code that I already have. It's a very simple code, as you can see. I am counting titles, grouping them by each title, and then counting the number of titles for each group. So I will come here and run the code. And this time it's going to be faster and it's going to show me that I have 14 sales representatives in one of each for North American sales manager, director of sales, etc. right? So here's the first uh, example of data manipulation using Spark. Now let's take a look at our table again. Now, if you look at the salesperson column, I have the first name and last name together. And let's say I would like to split this column and I would like to have first name separately and last name separately. So I want to have Steven and Jiang in separate columns. Let's do that. Again, I am going to copy the code and scroll down here and then I will add another block of code. And here I'll paste the code which is going to split the salesperson column into two separate columns. And then I'm going to show the data. And if I run the code, I am getting an error. Let's, uh, let's see what kind of error is that. All right, it looks like it might be due to an extra space that I have. Let's remove these. Let's do backspace and backspace and let's try to run the code again. All right, looks like it's good now. You can see that I have separated these, the column salesperson into two columns. And let me actually zoom out a little bit so you can see uh, the table without errors, right? Because when I was zoomed in a little bit, the two, the last two columns were not able to fit in my screen and they were kind of messed up. So in here, you can see that the salesperson column is now separated into first name and last name. The point of these modifications was to change the table a little bit and then create a new one. So what I want to do is to save this data as the new table in the list of my tables. To do that, I can use the following code, df write dot mode. It is actually giving me some intelligence here and then it's going to be append. The function is called append and then it's dot format. And the format is going to be Delta, right? Because uh, what I want to do is I would like to save this data as a Delta parquet table. All right, so it's going to be Delta and then the function will be save as table. I actually have it right here. So I'll just tab it and in quotations mark, I will write the name of my table. So that is going to be salesperson updated right? And then I can run the code and now it is working. And ideally now I should have a new table in, in the list of my tables, right? Let's wait a little bit. Let's go ahead and create refresh. And here is my table. And if I look at my table load data, it should have exactly the same structure as, as, as this table here. Let's display it. And Let's go here and scroll to the right a little bit. And here you can see, right, the first name and last name columns were added. So now I have created a new updated table by transforming one of the existing tables in my lake house using the Spark Notebook. That being said, let's continue our overview of notebooks. So we have seen how to work with the tables and now let's see what we can do with the files here, right? Let me go to the file section and let me select one of the files. Let's select region. If I right click to the file and go to load data, I have two options here. I have Spark. So if I do Spark, I'll do exactly the same thing as I did with the tables, right? Uh, let's see what I can do with Pandas. Pandas in Spark refers to Pandas API, which is essentially a Spark module that brings the Pandas data frame. So it's a different data frame than Spark. All right, let's run this code. Let me collapse this so we have more space in here. So when I run this code, right, I can see my table here. Uh, it's a very simple table. I got region, country, and group. So let's think what kind of transformations we can do. And one of the things I thought would be to change the group to continent. 
because it just makes more sense to have North America, Asia, and Europe, and Pacific as continent, not as a group. So let's do this. Uh, let me grab my code. And what I am going to do again, I'm going to create another cell block down here. And we are going to import a uh, paste that code. I am doing a couple things here, actually. Uh, first, I am going to rename the column group to continent. You can see that here. And then I will add another column in here, which is going to say city. And the city is going to be the largest city of a certain region. For Northwest, it is going to be Seattle. For Northeast, it's going to be New York, etc. Um, so let's, let's run this code and see what happens. And here I have my change table. I have now the name, um, the column name is now continent and I have a city. I actually have two nulls in here, Australia and United Kingdom, because I didn't add them in here. So I can manually do that if I wanted to. I can go ahead and do Australia and that is going to be uh, Sydney, right? And then it is going to be United Kingdom. And that is all London, obviously, right? So let's uh, rerun this code. And when I do this, I have Sydney and London added. This is our modified file now, right? So what we want to do now is to turn this file, this modified file into a new table and put it into the tables folder. Now, I'm not an expert in Python. I actually need to learn more about this. But as far as I know, when using the pandas framework, you can only write this data into a file, not a table, which means you can create a new file out of this data, but you cannot create a new table out of this data. So that's why if you want to write this data to a table, you should first switch from pandas to Spark and then use Spark to turn the file into a table. To do that, let's open a new code line here, and then let's turn the pandas framework into Spark so we can turn this data into a table. Let me copy this in here and paste it and explain this a little bit. So first, we are going to switch from pandas to Spark. So we will create a Spark data frame, and then we will turn this file into a table using Spark. And this table is going to be called region updated. Let's run this code. And now it's done. And if I go to my tables and I refresh the folder, I should see this region updated table in there right here. And let's go ahead and see that table. Let's run this code. And now I can see a new table in my tables folder, which was modified column group is now called continent and then I also have a new column called city. All right in this video we had a quick introduction to Spark Notebooks and Fabric. Apache Spark is a powerful tool that can be used for transformation and processing of large data sets. We saw how to transform existing tables and create new tables from both files and tables using Python in a notebook. In the next video, we'll continue working with Apache Spark Notebooks. Until next time.